All right, guys, Ian here with Legacy Endurance, helping you run further, faster, and more focused. I'm super excited because today I am talking with the one and only Gord from Gord's Running Store. This is my favorite running store in Calgary by far, Gord. So thank you very much for taking some time out and chatting with me today. Excellent, Ian, and thank you for coming in and giving me the opportunity to help, help with some information to hopefully help your followers yeah. and uh, athletes get what they need when it comes to their foot or needs. Yeah. And who knows what else they might need them in the long run, so to speak. Yeah, well, thank you. Because one of the questions we get a lot is, especially from newer runners that are people just starting, maybe learning to run, is, you know, what's the deal with shoes? There's, you know, as we can see, you can probably see behind, there's a whole bunch of different shoes that people can select and choose from. It can be super overwhelming for people to decide, like, what's the right shoe for them. So maybe a good place to start for, for people is, what are some of the different types of shoes that people can expect to find when they get into running shoes? Um... Well, first of all, when they come to the big wall of shoes, um, we'll get a number of people that they'll take a um, number of approaches to find themselves at the wall. They either read a running magazine or they've seen the shoe reviews or they've looked up online and had some tidbit of information that way. Then there's other people who just come to the wall of shoes and they uh, choose by price, thinking that the most expensive shoe, it's got to be a good shoe because it's a lot of money. So I'm going to do some long distance running, so therefore it must be a good shoe. And then you get another person comes up and says, I like that shoe there because I really like the color. They really hit it with the, the colors, and that's all about me. Um, so in all three situations, uh, what we try to take the time to find out is, first of all, whether the person's going to need a neutral shoe or whether they're going to need a stability shoe. And now with the advent of uh, lower drop shoes or your heel is lower to the ground there's uh, uh, some people saying well I want one of those minimal shoes mm -hmm. so there's a few more variables that are coming into the picture before we start to say okay let's sit down let's try on a pair of shoes or two then once we establish whether the person is a neutral shoe or a stability shoe or in fact if they if they can go to the low drop shoes then we have an idea of okay what we can focus on the first thing we'll try to do is try to establish neutral or stability. Right. And with that, if they have an old pair of worn shoes, that helps us immensely to see, number one, what they've been using, whether it's worked mechanically, you know, like if it was a neutral shoe and it's sitting up nice and straight, then we'll stay with neutral shoes. Um, and also whether they even need a new shoe. That some people come in all excited to get a new pair of shoes. We look at their old That's shoes. That's me. I get a shoe. I love getting new <laughs> shoes. <laughs> it's like going to a candy store for me. But I... yeah. And then we get some people. We give them the bad news. Says, listen, for the mileage you're doing, the mileage you're anticipated doing, your shoes are still working really well. Yeah. Maybe if you keep maintaining this mileage, we'll see you in another month and a half. Maybe we'll see you in another four months. So how um, many miles on that note should someone? run before they should change their shoes out what's a good what's a good point to measure when that's time to get rid of them even they might look okay or how do you know yeah you'll hear all sorts of mileages that people will throw out there C common one that some people will throw out is 500 miles that equates to 800 kilometers so if you're one or the other i find most people get about 650 to about 800 miles out of the shoe if a person is running a lot of long mileage um when a shoe starts to get broken down, it's those long runs late in the life of the shoe that starts to subject your mechanics and the soles of your feet to a little bit more stress. And then in some some stores, it's literally you ask the salesperson to get you a such a size, and then you're just walking around, you're looking for comfort, mm -hmm. which is a, a very key element. It's got to be comfortable. But when you're, when you're coming uh, to Gord's, I know over the years, we found it most successful once we're fitting the people with the shoes, if it's for long distance running, you want to make sure you have a little bit of toe room for some wiggle. You're not slopping side to side in the shoe. And then the other thing is we're going to watch the person when they walk to and from us. And we're looking for a couple things. Uh, when the foot goes from heel strike to mid stance to toeing off, it should look like the shoe is going reasonably smoothly through the entire gait cycle. Um, secondly, at the mid stance phase, we like to see the shoe set up reasonably straight. It can be a little bit of inwards roll or a little bit of outwards roll, but as long as it's not too dramatic one way or the other, then that individual, we're in a shoe that is a good possibility. 
I know it as a neutral shoe. Um, neutral means there's nothing favorably harder on the, on the inside, underneath the arch of the foot, to help compensate one way or the other. So it's just going to let the foot do what it's meant to do. Mm -hmm. um, we flip, usually flip the shoe over and we, we'll squeeze it at the ball of the foot area. At that point in the shoe where it's the thinnest, you're repeatedly pushing off with like 400, 450 pounds force. When the shoes start to pack down, that's where they start to become thinner. If you're running down the sidewalk, you can feel that crack in the sidewalk with some sense of clarity through the underside of the shoe on your solar foot. That's a good physical clue to say, okay, yeah, it's time mm -hmm. to replace the shoe. We have another person who she really wore out the shoe. Holy, look at that. There's a hole in that one, and there's even a bigger hole in the other Holy. one. Holy. Yeah, those um, are miled out. I would yes. say those are miled out. <laughs> yes. She, she maximized the miles. No kidding, hey? So, I think so. so one question I have then is, I is, is it possible to buy a shoe that will correct the stride? For, for people that are, I've talked to people in the past that have got a real bad heel strike, I want to fix that. What's the right shoe to fix that? Is there, a, is there such a thing as a shoe that can help to encourage a better like running stride or a better foot strike? Or is it mechanics come first, the shoe comes second? I'm, I'm going to say the mechanics are the first. And if you want to change your heel strike, it's a subtle thing. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're doing over the course of a training program with the help of a coach and to meet once or twice a week. You're just going to re review your running form and you just make really subtle changes to how your foot strikes. Then you're going to go away from the traditional drop shoes to, and start to migrate towards mm -hmm. the low drop shoes or the zero drop shoes. So that's a really, that's a really key point. So as someone's as someone's stride starts to evolve, even beyond being a rookie just starting out, as you start to evolve your stride, perhaps get more efficient on your feet, it's very likely that you'll want to get re resized, look at it again, get another analysis. Maybe it's a different shoe. Maybe you've been running in the same shoe for 10 years and that's not a great shoe for you anymore. Is that a fair statement? It's reasonably fair. Yeah. The only difficulty I find with that is, <clears throat> is sometimes people will think, um, really good examples, people read the Born to Run book. And they, um, it was all about the, the migration, his attempt to migrate, and eventually migrate to a, a barefoot or a low drop type uh, style of running. Mm -hmm. But along the lines in there, it was all about technique. The person who does successfully run with a midfoot stride, they typically have a really high cadence, and they run more of the, the foot strikes underneath them rather than out in front of them. Um, where the people who wear the traditional slightly higher heel shoe relative to the forefoot, that is a typical heel strike area, and their foot heel strikes here, rotates inwards, and then pulls off. Mm -hmm. So that rotation is referred to as pronation. And I tell some people they, they pronate normally, and you think you swore at them because they, <laughs> you just called me a pronate. What's a <laughs> and to me, pronation is a perfectly good thing for your body's mechanics mm -hmm. to disperse shock naturally through the lower ligaments. The idea of pronation. If you can remember one thing, it's the lower leg from the knee down going through a, a series of rotational type forces that disperse the shock through the ligaments and tendon. As when we walk and when we run as we're kids, it's basically our body's neck method to disperse that shock. When you switch from that heel strike type motion to more midfoot, the rotational forces are usually gone. Mm -hmm. So now the forces go from up and down from your ankle joint. So if you successfully step on your forefoot or midfoot, you have your ankle joint takes some of the shock, your knee joint takes some of the shock, and your hip, so it's dispersed much higher up the leg. Mm -hmm. The net effect, whether it's a benefit or a detriment, the, the shock forces are the same, whether you do the midfoot strike or whether you do the pronation. It's just that um, it, the, the rotational forces are gone. I think what I'm hearing, the key message is that it's, there's so much that goes into sizing up that shoe. If you are coming in, it's a good idea. To, if you have ran before, or if you bring in your old shoes, that will give us a good first gauge of maybe what's going on in your stride. Get a proper gait assessment and really narrow it down to the proper shoe that would be a, you know, really effective for each individual. Exactly. Um, I can tell you guys firsthand that Gord and his team are amazing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link up below Gord's website and contact information. If you're in the Calgary area, this is the place to come to get your shoes. Anything else you want to say before we wrap? If you come on in, uh, if it's a nice day, we use, do encourage people to try the shoes on the sidewalk because they can feel good walking. Yeah. It's when you're actually running and using the shoes. We encourage people to try the shoes out. To We give you 30 days. If you're in the indecisive mode, just do your, your best to keep them as clean as possible. 
most people appreciate they have the chance to really try them to make sure they're going to like them. And you're not going to get that online. <laughs> you're not if you order on the line, you're not going to get that. You're not going to get to try it. So thank you so much, Gord. I really appreciate you taking the time, and uh, we'll uh, talk to you again. Happy running, everybody. We'll talk to you soon.